Welcome for Eureka Kingdom Time, your solution moment. Join us for a session of praise and worship. God bless you all. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Hallelujah. And let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. This is the call from the mountain of
most welcome for Eureka Kingdom time. I know the Lord will use this time of the word to touch your life. The word of God is a powerful thing. Let's pray. Wonderful Father, we want to thank you for this moment. May you reveal your word to us. Wherever this word finds your people, let it touch their lives, let it bless them, let it strengthen them, let it equip them to do what you have called them to do, to realize what you have called them to attain. We thank you, Master. We we'll bless you. We give you glory. We we'll give you honor. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome our friends from near and far uh, for this uh, Eureka Kingdom moment. It's our solution moment. The word of God provides the solution we are looking for in life. The word of God keeps us. In this session, of the Eureka Kingdom time, we are looking at the power of the mind. The power of the mind. The mind is in the showless rim of our being. Man is spirit, soul, and body. So the mind is that part, our part, that is that human part where thoughts, where the faculty is a faculty for thoughts and awareness. So uh, I want to encourage you. Let's look at the word together so that they can take us where God wants us to be. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 to 21. I'm going to read from KJV. <coughs> King James Version. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verse uh, 20 to 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us and to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. through all ages one without end Amen. We are looking at the power of the mind. Now, when you look at this uh, Ephesians chapter three, this passage that we have just have just read, you realize that is actually talking about the mind. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. We ask or think. God is able to do a lot in our lives and through our lives. But you realize from this passage what he is he, he, what he can do the great things he can do for us he can do in our lives is connected with what goes on in our minds it's connected with our thoughts it's connected with our awareness it's connected with our consciousness so that means the mind is a very important place the mind is a power bank when we handle our mind very well and we work with God because that is where God work with us it is in that place the Bible says that we are partners together with God but she, uh, whatever God wants to do he begins it in the mind when he wants to deal with us when he wants to engage us when he wants to work with us he engages our minds so he's able to do a lot exceedingly abundantly 
now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You see, your asking cannot just be out of the blue. When you are going to pray and ask God, you ask out of what has been going on in your mind. You ask according to what you have been thinking. And uh, as we think, as we consider, as we reason in our mind, his power that is in our spirit, his own spirit at work inside us who are born again, works together with us. Is also working in our minds. And, and you see, you cannot, God cannot just work with anything. God works with what belongs to him. He works with what is the, is the source of the thoughts that comes from him. That comes from his word. Because his thoughts that we have really comes from his word. If we are people who are engaged in reading the word of God, listening to the word of God, his word will shape our thinking. His word will uh, shape our prayer, our asking. Our asking. Our consideration. Our reasoning. Our meditation. And then his spirit that works with that in our mind. The mind is a very important place. It's a very powerful place. Really, what I'm talking about is, is really, I'm talking about uh, what we have looked at in the past. It has to do with kingdom mentality. The way we think as kingdom people. Because the kingdom of God is not only a spiritual issue, it is also a mental issue. You have to be aware of that. Because if you are conscious of that, then you, your relationship with God will yield a lot for you. Is able to do abundantly above all that we ask all things but all that is done in the mind it begins in the mind the work is in the mind whatever is achieved on earth here by human beings it starts in the mind whatever it is name it whatever the project whatever the discovery Whatever great things people do, it all begins with the seed of thought in the mind. And then we begin to make decisions out of that. We begin to decide. Then whatever we decide, we begin to serve it. And that's when things begin to happen. And uh, let's look at uh, in the message uh, Bible, the same passage. It brings it, it gives it another angle that will help us really understand why the mind is a very important place. Uh, verse number 20, 21. God can do anything. You know? Far more than you could ever imagine. Or guess. Or request. In your wildest dream. It does it not by pushing us around. But by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah, in Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all the millennia. Oh, yes. Now, let's look at this again. Now, just God can do anything. God can do anything. Remember, he gave 
Adam lost the earth to the devil. Adam Jesus Christ, the second Adam, came yes, Christ, so Adam to pay a later. price. And, and when we, we accept that price and invite him into our lives, no, we enter the kingdom, kingdom because he's the door. And we are restored back to God. And we receive the kingdom. When Jesus came preaching, he declared it. He said, The kingdom of God is here, it has come. Repent and enter it. Repent, enter it and begin to experience the rule of God. Go back to your place of dominion. Take charge of the earth. Take charge of the, where God has placed you. And see great results. So we are told here that God can do anything. He can do anything as far as our, 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 our mission is concerned. In connection with our assignment. In connection with his will on earth. Not just anything. Because he works through us. We are his managers. He has put us on earth here to make his glory fill the earth. To enable the earth reflect his glory through our own lives. So we can do anything. In other words, nothing is impossible with you. Nothing is impossible. It can do far, far more than we can ever imagine. Look at that. We can ever visualize or envision or even see. Imagination is a picture we see in our mind. What do you see? Whatever we see in our mind must be in line with what God has spoken. His word which is there for us. The good news. In line with the good news. Yes. It must be in line with the good news. We have to visualize. We have to see. Eh? Whatever. We have to consider even what we pray. It has to do with these promises to us. Great things that it he has promised. He has to do with that. What he is able to do is connected with his own program, his will for our own lives. That's why it is very, very important for us to realize that the, the, the real power is with us. The kingdom is within us. The rule of God is within us. When you have the spirit of God and you allow him to work from within your mind, you will see great things. You will attain great things. And uh, your imagination and your prayer your prayer and your thinking will be according to the word of God. That is when now he's able to come and say, well, you have done well. Yes, these are my thoughts. You have asked me according to what I've promised you. You are meditating upon my word. And because you are doing that, I'm able to bless you beyond what your expectation, beyond what you have imagined, beyond what you have thought. Then he comes in and he does for you wonderful things and through your lives wonderful things. When uh, Jacob was running to his uncle Laban escaping from his brother Esau. Esau was very angry with him could have even murdered him. When he reached Bethel he talked to God and made a covenant with him. He said, God, if you will protect me, you take me to my uncle's place, protect me there, give me food, give me clothes. I will serve you in this place. I will give you all my time. That was 
what he thought in his mind imagined. he just wanted the basics but God said look you are a covenant child you have thought well uh, you have asked from me for your livelihood you have asked your clothing from me you have asked the basic necessities of life I am able to do for you beyond that and when Jacob was going back to his father's land he reached the same place in fact when we reached river Jabok and he was about to cross this man was greatly blessed he had had livestock he had servants he had his family he had a huge 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 number of people with him he was greatly blessed he was in two big groups God gave him behold what he thought or even imagine. But at least his thought was with him. He meditated upon the covenant that his father Isaac had with Almighty God. And his grandfather Abraham had with Almighty God. And he began to think along that line. And that's one of the reasons why he craved so much for the blessing until he took it from his brother who was a careless man. It was in connection with his imagination. Not just any imagination. It was engaging the promises of God. For you who is a believer, you have the spirit of God in you. The moment you meditate upon what God has promised you, the prophetic word that you have received, the Holy Spirit gets engaged into that and it begins to watch over you carefully to brood the words that you are meditating upon to brood it the way mother hen broods the, 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 the eggs in order to add chicken and chicks out of the eggs so that's how God works the Holy Spirit broods over his words that's why it is very very important for your imagination imagination really to, to be engineered by the word of God your imagination should be the product of the word of God should be birthed by the word of God whatever you request to be according to the promises of God and when you do that the Holy Spirit begins to work in you now this version says it does it not by pushing us around the devil pushes people around a lot that's why I love the Holy Spirit I love the Holy Spirit every morning actually I talk to him I said Holy Spirit I love you. and it has enabled me to hear his voice easily it has enabled me to be guided by him easily. He does not push us around. He's so gentle. If you are in a hurry and you are not settled, you will miss his voice. He's very gentle. But he works from within us, deeply inside us. And he works gently. And when we allow him to work, because we are focused on the word the promises the good news the good news the great things that God has promised us on the other side of the door after entering the kingdom there is a new life there is hope there is power there are great things there is empowerment he can empower you to rise above your circumstances above in the races, above trouble, you can overcome all the forces that works against you through his help. And there will be a manifestation of the glory. His glory is manifested in your life. His glory is manifested in the church. So the result of imagining what God has given you through his word 
praying what God has given you through his word. Or asking what he has given you. He has promised. And dwelling on that. And meditating on that. And looking at that. Will bring glory. Will bring great honor to God. In your own life. And in the church. Of Jesus Christ. And in the Messiah himself. And in the Almighty God. It brings great honor. It brings great splendor. It brings worship. It causes people to worship God from all, with the, all their art when they see what God has done. We are looking at the power of the mind. If you want to get an, the unimaginable, you want to see great things come out of your relationship with God. You have thoughts. Your imagination. Your prayer. Must really be according to the word. Let it be birthed from the word. Trust that is able. To fulfill. That which he promises. Trust. Because that's what faith is. Believing that is able to carry out. What he has promised. In his word. That is faith. And when you do that. God will do behold your expectations. He can do anything that he promises. Remember he promises great things in his word. Miracles. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you have asked. Yes, you have dwelt on the word, you have asked according to the word, you have meditated upon the word, you have pondered upon the word. That will be the, the starting point. That is the bottom line. You dwell on the word. You meditate on the word. You engage the word in your mind. You speak the word. You think the word. You pray the word. Then you see his mighty works. It has not changed. The same principle applies. From the beginning of God's covenant with men. Up to the same principles apply. What you put in your mind is what, is what will come out. Is what will motivate you. Is what will give you character. And will take you to your destiny. Now Joshua 1.8 Joshua 1.8 Joshua 1.8 Message Bible And don't for a minute let this book of the revelation be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night. Making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you will get where you are going. Then you will succeed. And don't for a minute let this book of the revelation be out of mind. God was talking to Joshua. He told Joshua, said, Joshua, you are giving these people their inheritance. The promised land, you are going to oversee the possession of it. But if you want to succeed together with these people that you are going to lead, take care of your mind. What I've revealed to Moses that has been written in the book of the law, think about it. Consider it. Deliberate on it. Meditate on it. Day and night. Consider the answers that I offer you for every day's challenge, for every season's challenge, for every feat that is. You, you are supposed to, to, to handle. To tackle. Look at the word. Look at the offer. Look at the answers I've given. 
You see, that is what Joshua was told. Allow my word to engage your mind. Especially the one that addresses your needs. Joshua was told that. That is exactly what Apostle Paul is telling us. In uh, 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 that Ephesians 3, 20, He is able to do exceedingly above that which we think or even ask. Above what we ask or even imagine or even imagine see in our mind. You see? You see? And according to his spirit at work in us. So the spirit of God works with the word of God. Doesn't work with the laws of the world. Works with his own laws that guides life. That guides the universe. So he was told, ponder meditate on it day and night making sure you practice everything written in it you see with the decision we make in our mind will cause us to act after deciding whatever you have decided you will become a servant of what you have decided and that will shape your character. And that will help you to realize your destiny. But if your choices are wrong, then you will abort your God-given destiny. But if your decision is according to the word of God, that decision that you make will shape your character and will help you fulfill your destiny in God. That is what God was telling Joshua here. And that's what he's telling you right now. That's what he's telling you right now. And Joshua was told, practice it. What the decision we make in our minds will it actually is what will it motivate our actions we act upon it you can never decide things in your own mind without putting it into practice so the good things that's the good choices that you have made apply it to your life apply it to your life be guided by it. Then you will get where you are going. You will get where you are going. Then you will succeed. May God enable you to succeed. May God empower you to make decisions according to his words. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at uh, Romans 8 verse 6 That's how we know that really uh, what, what, what Apostle Paul was telling the Ephesian church that look what is able to do the impossible the impossible great things for you it's not in connection with what is carnal it's connected with what he has spoken what he has given his children his covenant chi children if you're a covenant child of God you use what uh, what what God has spoken in his word. because the Bible calls it the word of the covenant. The word of the covenant. His words for you as a New Testament day. That is what will bring you out. That is what the Holy Spirit will work with. That is what God will work with to do the impossible in your life and through your life. May you begin to see the impossibilities that are in your life possible in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, you could have struggled. Let me tell you, even saving money alone, saving money alone, even if you have been earning, to some people it is impossible. It is, they are in that 
They're in that right from the mind, from their mind. Their priorities sometimes are not right. Sometimes their priorities are okay, but their forces that completely blocks them. May you be set free from the forces in the mighty name of Jesus. May the decision you make now bear fruit. May they be in line with what the word of God says. May it enable you to take the right direction. Yes. May it enable you to succeed in life in Jesus. Romans 8, 6 to 7, King James Version. This is what it says. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. You see this passage makes it so clear. That when we are carnal, we are flesh. When we don't go by what the word of God. We become the enemies of God's interest for our lives. And we will never be submitted to his word. And if we are not submitted to his word, we, we cannot see the great things that he promises. Those impossible things that he can make possible for you, you will not see them. Those great things that the Apostle Paul talked about. You cannot see them unless you are spiritually minded. Unless you embrace the word of God. Unless you focus on the word of God. Unless you consider the word of God. Unless you speak the word of God. Unless you act upon the word of God. When you do that, then God will engage your mind fully to bath out of your life the great things that he has for you to bath out success the carnal mind is in enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God the law of God is his word so really what Apostle Paul was referring in Ephesians uh, 3, verse 20, 21, is connected with the laws of God. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly above and above all that we ask or think, our asking and our thinking should be linked to the laws of God, the word of God. That's when we see greatness. That is when we see abundance of his work. He can do far more than we could ever imagine or even request. What do you see? What are you imagining? Some people imagine that they will die poor. Some people imagine, they begin to imagine how they are going to die. I prayed with a, 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 with a certain person was now thinking, uh, meditating of how he was going to die of that sickness, how they were going to bury him, imagining how the funeral was going to be like. Imagine. <laughs> so, so he was carnally minded. Carnally minded. But God miraculously, when we stepped in to make him see the good news which is there, we came into his life. He accepted the offer of healing and he got healed. He's in, engaged now in enterprise. God has done a lot through that man's life. Now, let's end up with 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 12 and then verse number 16. NIV. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That we may understand what God has freely given us. There are things that God has given us freely. He has given us. How do we know? We know it from the word. The spirit of God engages his own word. That is in our hearts. Now verse number 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Who has known the mind of the Lord? But we have the mind of Christ. 
We have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has the mind of Christ. If you are a believer, you have the mind of Christ. Engage the word of God in your thinking in your past. and the Holy Spirit will engage with you and the impossible will happen in your life. Success is your portion in Jesus' name. And I want to challenge those who have no personal relationship with God through Christ to receive him. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. He's the one who paid the price for you. Yes. Is the one who came to usher us into the kingdom. He's the king. We are in his dominion. And so we serve him. We work for him. Let's receive the offer of a new life. The offer of victory. The offer of power that will help us to rise above what has limited many people. If you are ready, to allow Christ to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior, so that you connect to your Father, the Almighty God, who has a plan for you. Remember, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Almighty God except you. If you have no relationship, you can enter one now. Through a simple prayer of communion. Pray this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive my sins. I repent of my sins. Right now, I invite you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Amen. If you say that prayer for your heart, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Find a Bible teaching uh, church near you and fellowship there in order to go spiritually. If you live in Uganda after the lockdown, get a church. If you live in the city of Kampala, you are most welcome to worship with us at the Church of Christ Ministries And I want to assure you, your life won't remain the same. The word of God will transform you. And before I go away, I want to encourage you to call me through those phone lines uh, on the screen. You need prayer, you need counseling, use those lines. We'll pray for you. We'll help you to see what God has for you. And now, I want to ask to go to a very important time. And that's the time for giving. God commands us to give. Why? So that we can be blessed. So that we can receive. It's a spiritual law that has a tangible effect in our lives as God's children, as covenant people. It's a covenant practice. So you can send your offering, your sacrifices through the account number on the screen and the mobile money number on the screen. And also, I want to encourage you if you have not yet uh, subscribed to our Facebook page and uh, our YouTube, you can do so. And you will access materials that will bless you. Encourage your friends also to subscribe. And God will greatly bless you through those materials that will find there. Amen. And uh, I want to encourage you to tune in next uh, evening to our healing service. Uh, tune in for our healing service at 6 o'clock. We shall send you an alert and I know still it will bless you. I want to pray for those who are going to give and those who gave previously for the Lord to bless you. Father, bless them that have given before and bless them that are going to give after now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are still in the pandemic time. 
Don't forget to take care of your hands. Wash your hands with water, soap, Your hands. If you don't have soap and water, at least sanitize your hands. Put on your uh, face uh, mask and keep social distance. Do your part and God will do his part. Until next time, stay blessed and stay safe. Amen. Amen. Choir, Amen. take us through this time of giving. Exceed.